Hey everybody, it is Cinnamon Cooney, your Art Sherpa, and this is a very exciting free live streaming painting class today. Today I'm going to be showing you step by step how you can paint this large canvas floral. Now this canvas is actually two canvases that we have used tape to stick together so we can do the painting. It's perfect for friends that are painting together or it's a great economical way to be able to put a very large canvas piece like somewhere in your home. Now what I have here is two 18 by 24s. Good news though, this will resize to any canvas you have. You don't have to do it this big if you just really like the painting but you didn't want to go big. But if you do, this is a fantastic tutorial to figure out how to do that. If you check the description below, there's a link to our website and there's a bunch of other information in the description, materials, product links, recommendations for resizing software, just everything that you need to succeed at this project in kind of a stress-free environment. Remember, sometimes that stuff is hard to open and know that it goes on. It's more than just a couple of sentences. There's about 50,000 characters. On the mic helping me deal with big canvas is John. Hey, guys. He has been spending the morning figuring out how to reset our studio so we could do this shot and then also get to the two large 18 by 24 canvases that are sitting on my big easel. If you guys are ready and you are super inspired by what you see here, thinking you might be able to do this for yourself at home, and I really think you could, because I'm going to show you every part of this project, let's hop on in and look at the stuff on the palette. Okay. All right. So over here, you can see that we have several brands of acrylic paint. Ooh, that's a big picture in picture. <laughs> Everything it about is. today I'll is big. I'll shrink that down, yeah. Everything about today is super sized. I'll have to shrink it. But you can see that I have mixed several different types of paint. I think I even have some golden over here that I use for things. And I have some Deco Art Americana. And here's what the deal is, guys. I just pick products that I think work really, really well. They're all very intermixable. Today's colors are cat, uh, yellow ochre, cad red light, cad red medium, quinacridone magenta, dioxazine purple. That's like a brand new tube. I'm going to have to pull the little peely thing off of it. Uh, I have titanium white, burnt sienna, phthalo blue, phthalo green, and this is carbon black. But listen, you could just use Mars black, lamp black, any black that you want. We'll pull this out of the way because the first thing that we're going to have to do is chalk in our design. Oh, look at these. Aren't these just big babies? Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, they're <laughs> all over the place. wild getting this filmed today. I have a small reference of the big boy over there, though every once in a while I may have to turn around and look at it to remember what I was thinking. My big first tool that I'm going to be using for this is kids chalk. This is the kind of chalk that you see in a chalkboard. Here you see the pre-painted black canvases, and I may even move this down so it's not in my way. Um, and there, we just use tape to tape the seams together so that they were even and didn't move. You could just use a duct tape or whatever tape you have around the house. You can also, like, if you feel very handy, like bolt them together is a good oh, thing yeah. to do. But you I like clamps. To, frame them separated so that they become like a double piece that goes together. Now, these are already painted black. Um, you can, of course, just get whatever surface you have and paint it black. That is completely and totally allowed. I am going to, John's going to look at something for a second because I'm going to go get my coffee. I'm going to need it What's today. That? <laughs> oh, it. you went and stuck uh, off to get your coffee? I left it on the other side of the studio. <laughs> you, you can just sneak off and get it. You just sneaky, sneaky. I left it in my favorite part of the studio, which is like all flowers and unicorns and everything. But we're here in the practical part of the studio that fits <laughs> giant canvases. <laughs> which is, and it's a walk. I love that it's a walk. That's kind of crazy for me. So if you're wondering how you're going to do this or you've never done this before, here's what I'll say. I'm going to do a thing and you're going to do a thing. I'm going to do a thing and you're going to do a thing. At the end of all of these things, you and I are going to have a big, giant, gorgeous pumpkin fall floral done in acrylic that you're going to love. And actually, I've been getting a lot of questions. How hard is this actually? I'm going to say that other than size, it's a high one hoot, low two hoot. Because none of the techniques are particularly challenging. They're all really kind of like mellow techniques, the brushes, the materials. Other than getting big canvases, none of it's really that hard. This is a really easy thing to do. I did them live demoing for Michaels. When mm. I did a couple store openings with them, we demoed these live and they clicked right through. So I've done this a few times. I have a little familiarity about the difficulty. And my assessment is, and of course you're willing to go by the website and tell me differently, my assessment is not too bad. I'm going to coffee up though. Mm -hmm. That's happening. No, Because I'm going to need coffee for this. Let's see here. Vanessa was asking, why two canvases as opposed to just one big one? Because the cost is lower. 
One of the things that I noticed when I was in Michael's looking to see what I was going to paint on is that they keep running really big sales on the canvases, especially the multi-packs. So you could get these 18 by 24 packs on deep sale, like up to 75% off. And looking at that sale versus the same size ca canvas in the same stretcher, I was like, wow, that's a lot more economical. People could really do a big canvas this way. And it allowed couples and people to do a project together and each of them have an individual piece that they could hang somewhere and feel connection. Like think about like sisters or best friends going across things. So I was like, that kind of got my little happy romantic heart going. And I was like, there's so many good things from this double canvas. So that's why. But you could just do this on a big, you know, 24 by 36 canvas, which is a standard size. So, or you could do it on a small canvas because it resizes really easily. <laughs> you guys ready to hop on in? Absolutely. All right. First thing that I do with this big boy is I start to sort of sketch this concept in. I kind of want to know where I'm going to go and how I'm going to go. And the middle of the surface is where I get this going. So my first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little smile. If you think this is the halfway point, my smile is a good bit below the halfway point. Smiling, smiling, smiling with my chalk. And the nice part about the chalk is it erases. So like if I'm sketching, I'm not going to be that sad about it, right? So I got my nice little smile going here. I need to leave myself room for flowers and a pumpkin. Then I'm going to go round. This is the bowl of my vase. I'm going to bring this down to the bottom round. See, just boom. Smile in a couple parentheses. Who knew that drawing could be so <laughs> much fun, right? And I know that I'm going to have a little water line that's going to come down here. That's going to be fine. And we do have a bit of a perspective happening, but most of it's going to be behind our pumpkin. But you can sit there and just mentally say to yourself, all right, I've got this ellipse and I've got that ellipse and they're kind of the same ellipse, right? Mm. That's what you're thinking about. Now the pumpkin, this is an interesting boy and how I did him when I first did him is I kind of was like, what scale does my pumpkin take? And I knew my stem would be sort of more on the left side canvas and I would have like more like body on the, the right. And so the first thing that I wanted to do was kind of Give myself a circle that says my pumpkin needs to take up about this much a dinner plate's worth of canvas. Mm. Right? So there he is taking a dinner plate. But let's be honest, pumpkins are not wonderful round little bits, are they? Not generally. Not generally. So if you start to, to divide your pumpkin out by segments, starting from where you know the stem is, bring this out, another little segment. We're going to exaggerate a couple pumpkin things. And through that exaggeration, we're going to have a blast. Mm -hmm. You can see I'm just making these little segments. Segments. Segment your canvas. Super fun. Super easy. There we go. That's some nice segments. Where I have the segments on what now looks like a basketball, I'm going to make little round exaggerations. Can you see that? Yeah. These are little round exaggerations that help make this feel more pumpkin-y right well that's that's kind of basically doable now i don't really worry about putting in the stem yet because the stem is really one of the foremost objects on my surface but i do need to start thinking about where the greenery comes so right here on the left hand side in my second segment i'm going to make kind of an s curve line that's okay. I'm going to come over this side. In between these two, I'm going to make a little curve. It goes up to about that far. Now, over here, we've got some greenery that comes almost all the way up here. And for this, I find it can be nice to come down and up. So that I, can, I know to really exaggerate what's there. I can erase every one of these chalk lines with just a damp brush. So this is really easy to clean up. Now I'm going to bring a little curve here and I'm going to bring a little curve there. Coming back over to the left side and I'll give John a minute to get there because Lord knows it's far. Oh wait, he's already there. <laughs> I didn't know how hard was today was going to be. Let's make a little S curve down and let's fill in this space because we're like virtually arranging flowers, aren't we? So this is our greenery. These are our layers. If you're trying to cover up this particular black, if you buy the exact set that I've got, Mars Black 
is a perfect match for that. And the Liquitex Black Desso also does a really good seamless matte. But it's just Mars Black, which is that matte black that they really use. That's the pigment that they use on this. Well, something that I checked out. How are you guys doing? I'm almost winded from sketching it in. It's a big canvas. Mm. <laughs> it's going to be an exciting day. Not as hard as you might think, though. Yeah. Let's put out our colors. And the first part of our colors are going to be a lot of fun. They're going to be a little bit of my phthalo green. That's pretty okay, right? Yeah. A little bit of the cad yellow. Okay, cool, cool, cool. We need some burnt sienna, believe it or not. And I'll put it over here by the green on that side. Squeezing that out, putting that out. And then very importantly, we're going to use some white. And we're going to start these colors with that mix. And actually, every once in a while, you'll see me look over at the actual original that we opened with. Just to make sure that my color planning is correct, because later I'm going to be just doing the phthalo green and, and uh, white, which creates a completely different layer of foliage. You guys doing good? Mm hmm You ready to hop into this? Absolutely. Can I show you how we do these, like, leafy brush strokes? Yeah. I would love to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to see. So, now I did use this number eight Art Sherpa cat's tongue to get the shape, but I really want you to know that you can get a very similar effect from a uh, filbert. So don't feel like that's the only way you can get it. And another good way of getting these big leaves is from uh, like a number 12 round, like this number 12 round. And I'll show you both. And that way you know, okay, it's really not like I've got to have one exact brush. And let, me, let me show you how you can erase. See? Erase, erase, erase. Erase, erase, erase. <laughs> Not bad, right? Mm. Now, normally I kind of flip the canvas around and when I'm demoing it, I'm going to be a little bit more awkward than when I painted it. And that's really because I'm going to take a little of my burnt sienna into my phthalo green and get some yellow into it, loosely mixed. You can see on the tip. And I'm going to press and pull. Press and pull. Press and pull. That's all we're doing. Let's come over here and make this three little leaf. So the three little leaf goes on the corner of the brush. I'm gonna press and pull down. See how we're getting that? And you can come along your chalk line with a green line and make a nice little stem that you work into. But you don't need to be super perfect with it because the leaves are gonna come over. It's just something that you can build up on. Let's get a little more yellow under here. You can sometimes add some white to change some. There's two little leaves. And this is really about finding those little strokes. They're like little commas. Don't pick on yourself about these brush strokes. Right? Don't do that. You can see that every once in a while I change up some of what's going on with my color. And I'll even come on the stem. I'm going to come back up here into the brown. And let's add some to the stem so you can see how we're building those up. Get into these nice big boys and let's put a nice grip here. So you have to decide, am I going to curve it towards like with the belly out towards the left but pointing to the right? Or am I going to curve it with the belly towards the right? but pointing to the left. So let's do one where the belly is towards the right and we're pointing to the left. Make a little mark there. There we go. That's a nice little bend to the stem, isn't it? Then back into some yellow and white. And I feel like a back into some green and brown. And let's make something kind of interesting here. So press that down. And then come in and join in a little leaf. And then we're going to bring this around like that. And give two little kind of pillars into that. So it's giving you that very kind of 
decorative, almost Russian folk painting kind of look to this. I am super impressed by the master Russian folk painters. They do some incredible florals on darks. And that definitely kind of informed this project. Though, you know, this work is much more beginner friendly. And, you know, that work is like that stuff that you work on for a lifetime <laughs> to get good at and be a master of. But it is interesting to look up and it's different than one stroke painting that you might be familiar with in the United States. It's really special. And if you have a little extra time, you can always go online and look that up. How are you guys doing? I'm going to sip my coffee. While you're sipping your coffee. This is project uh, today. <laughs> the Pearl was just asking, how do I get the text message notifications? The so, Pearl. Hi, the Pearl. How are you doing? There you go, the Pearl. So how this works is you go on your phone. Right. And you type in your messenger, whatever your messenger tool is that you send messages to your friends. Three, three, two, two, two is the number. The message that you're sending is the art Sherpa. And then whenever we're live, we will just send out a text saying we're live and hey, we're on YouTube or oh, no, we're over on Facebook doing a watercolor or, you know, we're somewhere in a group. We're doing something. You, Instagram you never know, you never know where we're going to be. Off our website or yeah. all sorts of things. We have secret places we, we have go secret live. Secret places from. we go live, but and on every once in a while we send out the text wrong, so you guys get invited to stuff. That's supposed oh yeah. To. So you, it's good to be signed up because you never know what goodies you're gonna get. That's very true. Or true. Hmm. Coffee. So let's build back the rest of this. We're gonna take this little fellow back to about there, and then we have to build these throughout the whole canvas. So that's a bit of a job. Now I'm gonna power through this day, right? That's going to be my thing. I'm going to power through my day making little leaves and getting this done. You will find if you've not done a big, big canvas, and this is your first big canvas, that these can be kind of physically exhausting. So like, if you're like, wow, I'm so tired. What's going on? That's super normal. This is all the Sherpa is going to do today. Like after she's done, like yeah. a sports team coming in, we're going to, she's going to be on the couch. Yeah, they're the going to make me go on the couch. I'm not allowed to do any more designing. She's be benched. That's okay. I did some paintings yesterday. Maybe I'll share them in the Art Sherpa official group. And I was like, what am I thinking? <laughs> <laughs> it was one of those days where nothing I painted worked out. It was just like, that was weird and random of me. Now you're using the cat's tongue there. I'm going to use the cat's tongue through this branch. And then I'll do like the number 12 on these two. Okay. Because it'll do a nice big job. Um. You know, what you're looking for in your brush is something that gives you a consistent brush stroke that allows you to loosely mix your heavy body paint and pull it out. And it gives you good layering, right? So it doesn't have to be specifically what I have in my hand. That's not required. Lots of great brushes in the world. And you want to use the brush that, you know, gives you a good result. Sometimes I like to play with these and put little little leaves that have pulled free. Is that playful like that? <laughs> but they are. They're wonderful. They create um, dimension and doing some of them small and some of them big really helps. And it's about really building those out. Now when this is dry, I can come back through with a damp, clean brush and remove that chalk very easily. I'll show you like right here. Nope, I have too much wet paint there. You have to wait till, I, till it's dry. I can't rush to show you. I'm sorry. So this is a number 12 black pearl, but basically what we have is a number 12 round. It's a big boy. We're going to get this in and I'll see if I can't show you how you would just do it with a big round because that also works. So you load up with some green. This takes in a bit more paint. I find the bigger brushes over the cat's tongue use a bit more paint. So that would be a difference. I'm going to come here and then again, press the tip and pull in and you're going to see there's not that much difference between those brush strokes is there no so never feel oh i like that where it got the big brown into it that you're just stuck with like oh i've got to buy her brush or that person's brush what you got to buy is good brushes that don't aggravate you that's your only job as a student Find good tools that don't aggravate you. And believe you me, the tool can't aggravate you. That's real. Students can be aggravated very much by a badly designed tool. So that part's important. 
you know, and definitely listen to your teachers. Sometimes we have good recommendations for things, but that doesn't mean that you have to ignore your own budget and your own well-being to enjoy painting. Oh, is that good? Yeah. I like the big boy because he does them fast. <laughs> He's a fastin. And it's nice in your hand, like this big chunky brush. This is like good times, good times. It used to be this was my small detail brush in my old painting practice. So I'm going to do one of these multi leaves where they're definitely multi pointed. Let's come here. I love how the brush being loosely mixed does these multi streak brush strokes. Creating so much dimension uh, over the black. Now, if you're really new and you bought a set of like a gazillion paints for a very economical price, they may give you a lot of grief painting over black. You may have to paint your leaves white first, let them dry completely, and then very carefully go over the top of them with your paint. Okay? So if you're painting and you're like, Man, my green is like just not covering this canvas. Stop, dry everything, paint the rest of your leaves very carefully white, and then very carefully trace over the top of them with your um, colored paint once, once it's dry. So hopefully that's a helpful kind of hack that will give you some ideas on how you might do that. It's always interesting to be having to use the brush upside down. Love using it though. It just, its little brush strokes make me super happy. Doesn't do as nice of a stem as my cat's tongue does, but overall, I'm pretty happy with it as a brush. I just put those little leaves there. The trick to these guys is, you know, curl them. Look at that. Curl those little leaves. Aren't those beautiful? Just already the green foliage is so much fun. How is it out there? Good. Do we have some people that want to try a big this giant is, canvas? It, 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 you know, we've got a, got a couple here. I'm surprised that there, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a good chunk of people. This is a big canvas to try too. This is very big. You know, it's, it's hard. You know, can you imagine... You know, roughly 550 of these paintings lined up end to end. That would be. <laughs> yes, I can. That would be Let's like, do what it. do they call those Let's things? Let's make it a personal goal <sighs> in our hearts that 550 of these will be lined up end to end. And you, you will be part of that goal, <laughs> right? Maybe we can paint across America, big canvases coming across, Texas snowflakes blowing everywhere. It's going to be magical. <laughs> motivational art speaking by the sherpa <laughs> mm -hmm. you know the only thing is is that the right side of the can surface mm -hmm. tends to get blocked by you when you're working it you know, actually it just depends on which side you're working see when you work the left side of the canvas it's easier to see on the with the left yeah, side camera john's got a really challenging that's really thing easy. That he's got to do that. here. I don't just have a challenging like paint it. John has a challenging film it. But the thing is, is all you've got to see is he's just every once in a while has to help you see how the brush is laying down the paint, and the way the leaf strokes might get built. And you guys, you kind of get it, right? Oh, so good, isn't it? Who doesn't want to do this? Put it over the sofa. Let's see, what size canvases are those? So these are two 18 by 24 put together. So the two 18s, right, are yeah. taped together, so makes that 36, and the side is 24. So overall, what you get is a 24 by 36. Hmm. Not bad, right? Not bad at all. So. That would be, you know, right now we have, let me just do some quick math, three feet times 590 people. That would be 1,770 linear feet of pumpkin, uh, floral. pumpkin florals. 
That in <laughs> itself is almost an art installation, isn't it? That would be pretty cool. Do performance art. Performance art. This is performance art. And, you know, this isn't going to be like maybe one of our very fast painting projects where it's like boom, 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 and it's like done. But it is really doable. It's really sustainable. Remember, while I'm going to sit here and finish today, I expect in definitely under a couple hours for sure. Um, don't put that same pressure on yourself. That's like a quarter mile of painting. I've calculated my... Uh, how much art I've inspired into the world, but I've never done it in mileage before. <laughs> <laughs> like, I know how many hours, like, people have watched the show. That's a good one to know. See, this, this, I, I can make this joke. I live my life one quarter mile at a time. And for that hour and 30 minutes, I'm free. That's now, beautiful. All two race car drivers who heard that just laughed at me. I don't know. This is a pretty wild group. You might run into some more <laughs> race car drivers than you think. So can you see, guys, how I am dipping into, like, I come in, I'm like, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, phthalo green. That's a lot of color. Right? Isn't it? Yeah. And it just goes out, dab, dab, dab. I, you know, the, now you're using the big brush again, and, it's, and you're not mixing heavily. Which is I causing, don't mix at all. That's why it's, well, you're just a, you just, you know, it's much harder for me to catch you when you just go dancing around the canvas now. Just say it. I understand that. Sometimes there's little holes and I have to fill them. <laughs> <laughs> they talk to me and mock me, John. <laughs> I'm distracting you. Heckling. Oh, thank you. Not mock. Super helpful. <laughs> you know, we got to draw the line somewhere. I wouldn't mock you. Heckle? Sure. Maybe I mock you just a little bit. Oh, I like the tip of that one right there. That came out really pretty. It really did. You'll even find like you'll have little areas where you're like, oh, I love that so much. Oh, and thank you, everyone. We've got some super chat. Thank you. Thank you, Patty. Thank you, Kim. Thank you, Patty and Kim. Thank you so much. We and I'm going to take that opportunity to thank all of our wonderful patrons who help keep our studio open. We love your support. We appreciate it. It's what makes it possible for us to do what we're doing here in a free and independent media kind of way. Whew, we've almost got the green foliage in. Woohoo! Supported by the love of the viewers. It's true. You know, we make light of it, but really, this is yeah, it's the really... modern public broadcast support. So thank you guys. We really do appreciate it. Yeah. I don't know how long in our lives platforms like YouTube will exist. I hope forever. I think it's a wonderful thing. Especially because they're, you know, a free education platform. Mm -hmm. But while we have it, it's a special place, and I hope you guys are enjoying it. Mm. I like painting. I like, I like big, big painting. leaves in a can of life. <laughs> we both <laughs> went to the same place at the same time. That's why we got married. <laughs> All right, uh, this is pretty cool. <sighs> the nineties creep on you. The nineties creep on me for sure. Now, if this seems a little bit overwhelming, if you go to that link to the website, to this page, you go to this video page, you're gonna see a step by step there. You should look to your right. Look over there. Look at that. Look how beautiful that is. Oh wow. That's so look at nice. That. We're busy. It's big. Scale. It's My little head is smaller. You're so, it's so pretty. I just, I just thought everybody would like to see that over there. Or you can go back to your regularly scheduled camera. <laughs> so um, if you go there, there's a step-by-step -step, and that will help you when you're painting this feel not so overwhelmed by the, the scale of the project or what's next or how fast I'm painting. And you'll be able to like kind of take that through step-by-step -step and be okay. I'm going to mm. put out some blue. As you do. As you do. And I'm going to get back into my number eight cat's tongue. And just real quick, I'm going to get a little of my green and blue together. And then some white. And this is going to be kind of the beginning of my glass color. Okay. I, was, I wasn't sure where exactly where you're going. There. And I'm going to come across. Boop, 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 boop. 
no point in going completely across the pumpkin yet because I'd have to paint it out. And I'm going to come around the side. That's pretty good, right? Now, yeah. if I get clean water, John's gonna sh we're going to show you how this erases. These should be dry by now. You can see it just comes right away. So don't stress about cleaning up your painting. <laughs> It'll be all right. Sometimes I know that chalk can just like mock you. Does that chalky mock and you're like, what? Mm. Don't mock me, chalk. And it says, but I will mock you. Oh, 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 oh. Now, here on the bottom, we're going to take a little bit of our blue and our green, just mixed together. Ooh. And just with your big brush, you could use a big bright, you could use your big round, whatever your big chunky one is. Let's start with this dark blue. Now, we're going to bring some water that kind of goes around the pumpkin, but this is going to be just underneath that. We're not going to be dressing the surface of the water at all yet and this is just a loose look at that we're just brushing back and forth just covering big areas using up the paint of that water this is also allowing our greenery to dry paint in there fun yeah just doing this. Excellent, guys. That's fantastic. I so appreciate everyone who's here today. Mm hmm So appreciate it. You know, I'm kind I of added excited. a little white, and I'm going to have this just be a little bit lighter. What, baby? I have to say, I'm always excited when we get to have a nice weekend event. We get to come online, hang out with all of our friends, do this live art thing where we kind of celebrate being together and doing this in a, you know, I feel kind of magic way with all of our friends. I have to agree with you. I'm just covering this up. Notice, though, I am sort of curving these brush strokes so that they reflect what is the bowl a little bit on that first layer. This gets that color in. You can always put out more color if you need it. More If color. you run out, put out more. There's more where it came from. It's in the tube. Go get it. You know, they make paint. You can just go to the store and get more. That's my whole philosophy. <laughs> the kind of matata. There's more paint at the store. And somebody somewhere is running a sale. If you look in the description, I have some discount codes for you guys that you're totally welcome to use if they work for you. We even have some for our Canadian friends. Mm -hmm. And there's some for global shipping. So help yourself. I believe I'm a girl who believes in a sale. <laughs> and there's and there's more. There's always more. You know, whatever art stores you're following, whether it's Jerry's or Dick Flick, check that sale page. Get those notifications. You don't want to miss out because they'll put stuff on 75% off all the time. Mm -hmm. And it's good stuff, too. Well, that worked really, really well, didn't it? Yeah. Okay. So next, I like to look at this by layer and talk to myself and go, what's next? What have I got going on in the layers? I definitely will need some more blue. I forgot to print out my own step by step. So you're going to have to talk out loud so because we can't, we can't peer into the brain of the, of the Sherpa. Circle? No. No. That so we're going to put out some more blue. Was I not talking out loud? I don't know. I'd be, I guess that would be a little bit like, Looking at, you know, like maybe a heavy metal cartoon. All right. <laughs> I'm going to open my fresh tube of purple. Let's listen to the nice fresh tube of paint noise. You, you like opening new tubes of paint that's like pop. So it's such, because you know, it's going to be wonderful. It's going to come out. It's going to look like butter. It should not look like cottage cheese. Take that nonsense back if it does. Um, it should look like butter. You need in clean water? Hmm? You need clean water. I yet? could use some clean water. That would be kind of amazing. I wouldn't hate it. 
I wouldn't be sad. It wouldn't make me mad. I don't know how you're going to get to me. Here, Here's a... Oh, I guess he's getting me a whole nother jar. He just went and found one. Of the, we have a ton of mason jars where we are. So at this stage, if you're painting the big canvas, just remember it, you might be holding your arm higher than you normally do. You may be taking a bigger range of motion. It may be impactful to you. So be sure, did you get on camera? Okay. Be sure that you're listening to your body and you're respecting that space so that your time painting stays enjoyable because you do want it to stay really fun, right? Yes. You want it to be good. Clean good, good, good. Huh? You got a little bit of clean water. Hey, look. I'll take it. We have over 800 people here just hanging out watching you paint. Hi, everybody. How many nice miles of canvas is that? <laughs> um, <laughs> you guys all paint. We're going to line them all up. It's roughly 8 times 316. So, uh, it's two. That's wow. It's a half mile. It's almost a half mile of it. That's awesome. We're at, at 2, a half 000, mile of art. That's we're getting close. I'm gonna dry this, and here's why. I want to do my little blue here. I'm gonna bring my little blue down, and I want to bring my red, and I don't want the green to um, get into it. So the parts that are still wet. Mm -hmm. I, I see a little bit there. You can always sort of tell when it's still wet because it'll be really shiny because a lot of acrylic will drop a little bit of a mat down. Look, I had a boo-boo there. Uh -huh. So I just fix it. Because clean water fixes a lot. <laughs> it really does. When my artwork gets boo-booed, I just clean it up. Okay. So I'm going to hit it just with a hairdryer for two seconds. Okay. Then we're going to put in this blue flower easier than you think, this blue flower, and then start putting in our gorgeous red poppies, which I'm in love, and the pumpkin, which I'm in love. All right. I'm so, like, I have emotional feelings about this painting. I just can't even, I'm, there's going to be more, too. If you guys love this. I love thumb it. Thumb it up. Tell me in the comments that you'd like a winter version. I'll do one that's all frozen snowy with red berries and chickadees or something. Something awesome and pine cones and the poinsettias and the whole bit all right everybody this is a really big surface so make sure you're taking the time to dry it thoroughly you'll notice that as she dries it she's not using heat she's got that on the low heat setting and that's because it really will affect the blacks and things like that and using low heat will make sure that you don't have any color shift or any problems like that so uh see just go through there and Make sure it's all dry. Oh, and the reason why she's doing making so, so, so thoroughly dry is so that when you're painting the next subsequent layers, you don't pick up any of that paint. Nope. Don't want none of that extra paint. Better not start with me. <laughs> <laughs> so we need to bring a nice, beautiful little stock flower that's up here. I'm going to do an S curve with my chalk, as you can see, just to help myself remember that that is sort of a shape that I'm thinking about. And then I'm going to really drop one off here. So coming out from right behind my pumpkin here, I'm going to take one right to that corner. And I'll get into my cat's tongue again. But remember, guys, what could you use? You can use the big round. You can use the number eight cat's tongue. You could use, uh, this is a Raphael Filbert. You could just use what you've got in your box. Don't stress. And if you're going to do the bigger canvas, do get some bigger brushes. It's, it's worth it because it's really hard to paint a big canvas with a little brush. Let's take our blue. Ooh, a winter version would be nice. Oh, yeah. I just think that I have one in my head that I think would be just, what? I'm taking a little blue, a little purple, and a little bit of white. Loosely mixed like we did for the leaves. We're going to come up here. And the trick here is to just barely touch the brush to get some little tiny marks. And we're going to just build a stock flower. Stock flowers will be more delicate at the tip, and they'll be bigger and fuller as they come down. And we kind of build them up in little brick layers. I just grab some blue and white. I like to curve these brush strokes in and layer them to each other. And then every once in a while, I'll just grab a different range of colors, which is not that different from what we did with the leaves, is it? Mm -hmm. And the phthalo blue and the dox purple does some gorgeous color combos together. So it's super fun to see that happen as the paint is put out. 
you're going to really love having this in your home. It's going to be one of those pieces that when people come in, it's a statement piece. And they will gush and ooh and ah about how gorgeous it is and where did you get it? And you'll be like, I did it myself. And then they're going to be like, You're so talented. Mm. And if they say anything else, you send them to me and I'll get them. <laughs> Because I don't allow nobody to mess with my students. <laughs> uh, not at all. I get all Sylvester Stallone <laughs> on that. <laughs> I'm like, get no. All sly. I do. I go full sly. Because nobody is more awesome and braver than a beginner. A beginner is the most incredible painter. Because those of us who've been painting it for a while, we know, we know this is going to be okay. And if not okay, it'll be fine. Like nothing terrible will come of it. But when you're new, you don't know. You don't know what the outcome's going to be. It's super nerve wracking. You have to be so brave, don't you? Mm hmm. And that's why I have so much respect for my beginning students. I have respect for all students everywhere, but it's just that first painting, that first time, the first time you try a big canvas. The first time that you do anything, it's a big deal. It is. You know what? Hmm. You should celebrate that flower and celebrate, whoa, it just to 920 people who are painting. You know with what this. time That's that is? Over 3,600 linear feet. If you're here in the chat, even if you're not normally a chatter, normally a lurker, I want you to throw up some bubble emojis or some dots because we're going to do some Texas snowflakes. You guys oh. ready? We did it. Woo! <laughs> I don't care. I just love me some Texas snowflakes. What it's, I basically have is a bubble machine, and you guys are my excuse to hit the button. This is the, my favorite key fob. <laughs> Get the bubbles on. So thank you guys for coming and joining us. We love hanging out with you guys. We love seeing you guys. It's really nice to have a crowd of people out here to celebrate art and make bubble messes with us. So thank you for coming and being part as of this. As much as you can. I'm going to be down here in the lower I see that. left, lower right side, lower right side, left, the right, whatever. The corner I cannot see from the other camera. Okay. Are you, are you, no, you can't. I could it. get back off the brush. That's about all, like, that's the only way I would, like, from there. But it's okay. I can see from the right I'm side. I'm okay from here, though. That's why it's a long-handled brush. Look. It's, it's okay. From, right, from the right side, I can see. That's the whole reason I have long-handled brushes is so I can get away from the canvas. I also have multiple cameras, so you don't have to stand awkwardly at one side. That Remember in the beginning when I was, like, painting from, like, the left or right hardcore? Uh-huh. <laughs> Just, like, and then my paintings would be all, like, weird and lopsided. And I was like, what is going on? Maybe we just pull that little stroke in. It's just pull back. Pull it back. Let's get some purple and some white. This is going to be real pretty. Look at that. These remind me of fairy colors. Supernatural colors, right? Blues and purples and magentas. They just feel magic. Just making the flower big. And you just layer up these little petals of this wonderful stock flower. I got this from um, a still life that I'm really in love with on uh, my site where I license images from. It's all, um, what are they called? They're called lupines, I think. And they're just, they just wander around. They're so gorgeous. These crazy flowers. They're just the craziest, coolest flowers. Like if it wasn't a photograph, I would have disbelieved that they were real. And I think big still lifes, man, that's really fun. Like when you get into big still lifes and it's a giant vase and it's like there's a crab or something weird and random in the corner, that's a lot of fun. <laughs> we did a big, we did a still life like that where we had the randomness. We our randomness was butterflies and uh, currents. Mm. But you know, I, I kind of dig the ones that have like the weird fish heads. <laughs> And then a bunch of flowers because it's just so discongruent to each other. I think we're just building up these flowers. Aren't we doing good? Yeah. I think we're doing great. You know, and remember, guys, we super love the emoji conversation. So have a blast. Oh, there's a big emoji conversation out here. So <laughs> it's happening. 
he highly encourages. I mean, family friendly emoji conversation. Yeah, there's but just, still. <laughs> there's, it is a flurry of snowflakes and stars and celebrations, and we love it. So it's yeah. all good. That is the best. It is my favorite. I'm a big gift communicator. I communicate by gift. Anybody who's ever had to talk to me online has been like, this girl likes to send a gif. <laughs> it's a clue you're actually talking to me. Well, gosh, there's a new record for us. Mm. We've got over a thousand people watching us. Bless your hearts. Thank you so much. I hope you're all painting. I hope this day is the day that you pick up a brush and you think to yourself, I could do that. You can paint. You can totally paint this. This is a big painting. You can do it. I'm going to have to bubble it up again, guys. I don't think we're done emojiing. Drop them snowflakes. Drop them bubbles because it's Texas snowflake time. Also, I'm going to sip my coffee because wow. I painted what is that big thing? stuff. What is that flower called? That's a crazy. Lupine. Huh? It's like a lupine. They're stock flowers. A lupine. That's a crazy That's flower. By. It's, it's a so lupine on steroids. I'm so you're just oh, a sip my coffee. And, you mm. know, I was making a joke because, like, you know, it's in boots and cats and boots and cats and boots Except and cats. Except with John, it's knees and what? It's, it's knees. <laughs> my knees go pop. My knees go pop. My knees go pop. <laughs> my knees go pop. My knees go pop. That's the over 40 beatbox. We're just walking into, like, I don't know. It was Michael's, actually. And John's just singing along behind me. My knees go pop. My knees go pop. My knees go pop. <laughs> And I'm like, things that we say now, look how good we're doing. This is turning out fantastic, y'all. You guys can do this. And remember, the step-by-step -step is there for you. The traceable is there for you. The links to the resizer apps, the links to the grading apps, the links to the color mixing apps. The exchange is all that. You go by the website. It's all free. You just enjoy and have fun and then share with me your results. All right. Okay? So, oh, my, my palate's all bubbly. You got a little bubbly. It's okay. <laughs> Now, these lupine flowers, we're doing more of them, yes? No, there's only these <gasps> two. And now we have to put in uh, some poppies. Some poppies and roses. Mm -hmm. and that's and awesome. Poppies and some roses. So I'm going to put a poppy. I feel like I need a poppy right here. That's about that big. I start them out kind of, I put some circles with my kids' chalk to decide how I want them and where I want them. Oh, I see. Right? And then the next thing I'll do is I'll, I will tell myself, like, oh, if it's going to be facing that way, I'm going to put the center there. Or if it's facing kind of directly on, I might put the center there. And that's kind of how I lay those in because I really stream a consciousness these flowers in. I can't, I can't even tell you when I do one of these. It's the first time I do it, it's sort of like, what do I feel like today? Wee! And then <laughs> I, from that, make a plan that y'all can follow along with. But the first one is just very esoteric and weird <laughs> my patrons that have to put up with that a lot because sometimes i come in the group and i'm like i don't know what we're doing today let's charcoal <laughs> they're very good natured very good natured <laughs> now this one is going to be more of an ellipse because this one is partially closed right yeah so you're going to want to have it kind of be like a bell or a cup like that and that's just stuff that you need to know, but you might not know in, draw, in art and painting, we don't draw in the same way that you do when you're doing like a pencil rendering, mm. uh, which if you're doing that circle line, circle line draw or circle line scroll is one of my favorites. On, if you just go circle line, draw, it'll pull it up. And it, I really like that for drawing. But we don't have to do a lot of drawing because we're painting. The paint. So we just get to do some arrangements. Now for the next part, I like to take my doxazine purple into my cadmium red, and it's going to deepen it, make it darker. Dark purple. You know, you could use an alizarin. That would be okay, too, or deeper red. But I like to mix colors. I'm using my number eight cat's tongue, and I'm just, this is one, you can see I'm sort of thoroughly mixing it, right? I'm getting a much more uniform color. And let me show you how I'm going to do these petals. So if I'm going to come here and do a petal, I do a weird thing. I'm going to take this brush on the flat, and I kind of wiggle it out, and I pull it in. And then next to it, slightly to the left, I'm going to kind of wiggle it out and twist and pull. Did you guys see how I did that? Twist and pull and boots and knees and pops my knees and all that stuff. <laughs> so I push it out. 
And I'm going to just pull that in. Now I dip in water just to get one or two drops. I'm not trying to get my paints thoroughly soaked. And then I've got to sometimes widen this petal. But that's how I get that basic shape in. Now here I want the petal to appear to be kind of almost bending back. So I'm going to start over here and I'm going to twist and pull. See how I did that? Yeah. John's going to get right on that so you can see it. I'm going to come to the, to the right of it and I'm going to sort of twist and pull again. You know, I sort of fill in between them. And then I'm going to add a little bit of that edge. See how we build those in? Fun times. Let's get one coming right up here. Maybe this one is slightly thinner. I love it. One in big red flowers. That one can be a little bit longer. Looking good. Mm -hmm. I'm going to bring this out here so you can see I'm finishing out that petal. And this will pull that flower to feel like it's in a particular kind of direction. And that's how I kind of get that. Now I've added a lot more purple for the center here. And I'm going to just make sure everything is painted all the way out. I've just made it a little bit darker. And now that is the first of that. Wow. Don't let that frustrate you. And remember, you can always practice on a piece of paper before you put it on your big canvas. You never, ever have to take that risk. It is okay to practice a brush stroke. It's okay to do a whole sheet. And then remember when you learned how to write? For those of us that had to learn cursive, how many times did we have to write the letter D? A lot of times. Remember mm -hmm. F, how confusing that letter was? In cur yeah. There's a certain group of people in here that's like, I just don't even have to do cursive. It's a font that I have on my phone. But for those of us that had to learn it, it was a lot, right? I am, I admire the calligraphy people. Oh. They can, like, take... Can you not just watch videos of calligraphy on Instagram? Sure. Just a little I... pen and the swirly little inks. And they go, letters. And you're like, I'm so excited about this weird short video that I shouldn't be excited about. But it's, like, the best thing I've seen all day. And I love pens. I don't know what it is about. Especially... Well, we used to turn pens. Yeah, we do. So. Mm. Sometimes right. I stop, so I have an excuse to sip coffee. So Coffee sipping time. I dip in my water to improve flow. Still my number eight cat's tongue. We're going to do one here. Now, here I'm going to want a thinner petal, like it's torn a bit. So I'm coming on the edge. My handle is up. I'm going to press in and pull. And then it's going to have a little friend press and pull. That's my thin, thin one. And this next one will come here. And I think will end like right there. So that one I might have to kind of work that one in. So I'm going to come here, widen it out, pull it in. And join those up. If you get too split there, you can just come in with the edge of your brush and let smooth out the edges of those petals. Super fun. Let's curve one up this way. Twist. That's fantastic, and, isn't it? Yeah, I like how thick you can let the paint get on. Oh, it's just enjoyable. Sure, covering everything up. Now I'm going to come here. Have fun. This is a beautiful brush for that. I won't lie, but you can do this with other brushes. It's just about getting to know your tools and uh, believing in them. I have a, a favorite artist that uh, is on YouTube, and he paints with, like, a big, long, weird stick. Mm. <laughs> so it's very into Monet. And, uh, and Monet used to paint with this very, very long stick brush. He just tied a bunch of sticks to a brush. <laughs> and the brush is like... <laughs> you know, It's not... So just know the magic of the art really is in you. What is a brush but a stick with some stuff on the end of it? Yes. What is a brush but a stick with some stuff on the end of it? All right. So I'm going to make sure that this little petal is pretty good. 
So that's a nice shape. Yeah. And we've really covered our canvas and we're doing pretty good. You know, you can always come in and just make sure everything is nice and perfectly aligned. And yeah. I may have to fill in here with some stuff. So I may come higher with my roses. If when you're free painting these, if there's a big space you've got to fill, just know you can come back with other flowers and fill it up. All right, still feel like you got to do it. We're going to come over here to the left and we're going to get these big boys. Yes, we are. Let's come over here and get these big boys. Squishy, squish. Pull it in. Oh, I feel like I've seen that twist and pull before. Twist and pull. It's like the bend and snap, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine. <laughs> I'm going to curve this one in a bit. Curve that in. Isn't this fun? Let's, uh, let's kind of tear the petal a bit by adding that little bit. Sometimes it's fun to make it seem like petals are a little bit torn. I'm going to bring some curve this way. So curve that. And then I'll curve it back. Look at that. That's nice. Big petal. And again, what can you do if you want to even that little edge out? You just come along here and it gives you a nice little petal, but you've got that structure there that's so nice. I can tap along there, building in the forms that become eventually the flower that we're painting. Let's readjust that. Wonderful. We're doing so good. How you guys feeling? Pretty good. Excellent. So over here, we do an interesting thing. We're going to come here, and we're going to pull in some petals. And then we'll actually have to sort of allow it to dry a little bit and then come and add some more petals. It's a weird deal on these bowl ones. Petal layering. Petal layering can be a challenge. But do not give up. Your artwork Persist is worth on. it. Now, are you on a round brush there? I'm still on this number eight, but I can switch to a round uh, again. You're on a cat's tongue. Yeah, I'm on a number eight cat's tongue, but this is like a filbert with a point. For this, you could do a nice big chunky round brush like this or a filbert. You'd be just fine. Just, just fine. And honestly, I've seen artists do this with like crazy brushes in their fingers. So don't feel like, oh no, I gotta go. Well, I mean, I never want to stop anyone from shopping. You need to go shopping. I get it. But don't feel like you have to to do the project. Now I'm going to rinse out a little bit. And this just helps me. I don't have to do it exactly like this. It just is going to help me. I'm going to go a little more into my red. So it's a bit brighter than what I've been painting. And I'm going to come here. And start to talk about the bowl. If you need to, I'll show you a trick. If you need to, you can dry what's underneath. Just real fast, and then go over the top. And the reason she's drying is so that uh, as she does another layer over the top of it, you want those brush strokes and those layers to persist. So the only way to keep those is to make sure you thoroughly dry them. Yes, that was a good explanation, doll. So we're going to come here, and we're going to... So you can see how that starts to form a bowl. I got a little excited with my bowl. <laughs> there we go. That's a good bowl. Now, you're going to get some dark purple and your cad red together, and you're going to do some interesting things. Right here, I'm going to come here. I'm going to make that little, I don't know, it's like a weird shape. It's basically two strokes of this. And let's put one here. These are, are just buds. Like flowers or They're buds? buds or? They're going to be buds. You need buds. Might even put a bud there. Going crazy with these buds today. 
Buds are a great way to fill up holes or areas that you're like, man, I'm not sure I got as much up in there as I want. It pops the color you throw in there. Yeah. So, like, if I'm trying to fill up something here, I can be like, bud, bud, bud. Rosebud. Poppy bud. Poppy bud. Yeah. Just doing Much some less buds. sinister. We're past bud. October. What, sir? <laughs> Sorry, I, I tend to get in a stream of consciousness when I'm painting. It's and, a thing I go through. And all the pop culture falls out. All the pop culture falls out. Yes, I'm, this is where that underpainting stage where we're starting to see them. Flowers take shape. Mm -hmm. Forms take shape. Exactly. Pretty cool. That is pretty fun. I really enjoy it. So I'm letting that have a little bit of a dry. And while I'm letting that have a little bit of a dry, I'm going to start putting in some foliage that I'm into. And basically, you start out with your with your thalo green, it's just mm. your thalo green. And the foliage, believe it or not, is going to be kind of a thalo green. I have trouble holding on to my paint now because there's bubble stuff on it. <gasps> it's, it's been slippery. slipperied. <laughs> It almost went. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> so let's come here and we'll do some things. So I'm going to get just a smidge of white into it. And we'll start out and let's make, I got to look at how I did my thing. Oh yeah. Okay. So like, say I was going to have a little vine come here. I'm going to bring a little vine there, right? All right. So I'm, wherever I'm going to put a little vine, I'm going to wander up. And put in some little vines. These are just little lines that say, hey, stuff is afoot here. These are just decorative vine lines. Well, they're just kind of letting me know where some for sure little leaves are going to go in. Oh, I see. A little simpler than the ones that we did before. Now, on either side of the little red petals, we're going to go like that. Ooh, oh, no, see, that really makes them look like little cradled flower buds. They're like little crater flower buds. Little cratered flower buds. Sitting on my canvas on Saturday. That's a dumb song, but I sing it anyway. Somewhere Simon Cowell is painting with us and screamed into the night. Well, <laughs> I, you know, I wonder. I, I wonder come if, over to the left. I wonder if Simon is as good a painter as you are a singer. Uh, <laughs> I would probably be kinder to his art than he would be to my singing. <laughs> <laughs> we you have know, different goals. You do. He's... He's looking for a producer. He's looking to produce the next person trying to make it to the top 40. And you're trying to help someone make think it about through their 40s. <laughs> think, you know, and we have a bunch of people who start out just modestly. I want to just paint and end up putting together really impressive collections. Oh, yeah. They're it's doing amazing. shows. I'm super impressed by the folks in our community. We just like all Very. the time I see this. Very. And they are amazing. You guys are up. Amazing. You guys ready to finish out these little leaves? So I'm going to just every once in a while pop some of these little marks, right? Mm -hmm. Just put them places where you know this is a very different something. You'll see me add a little white to it on occasion. This is a very different foliage from what we've had so far. It's color composition will feel different than the phthalo green and yellow. So when you come in, and then I'm going to come and watch this. We're going to get some white onto this and add some white highlights to that foliage. Look at that. That, huh? Amazing. Mm -hmm. It just makes it just pop. And I don't cover up all of the base. I just add a bit of this pop to what we've got. You just want to add a little pop to what you got.
And again, if you're feeling fatigue in your shoulder, know that that is super normal and it's okay to rest and do this in 20 minute segments if you haven't done big painting before. We can do this in 20 minute segments? Yes, I can't. I have can't. a job here, but they can't. We can't stop and break? Nah, I think that would be a very long. <laughs> Everybody would be like, wait, what? No, I don't want to go. Yeah, no, we're not going to. We're not going to do that. We're going to paint it out. We're going to paint it out. Paint it out. There we go. So, again, that wonderful mint color is so Ooh. fantastic. And it just, when you're ever wondering, this answers a question. I get asked a lot, how do you paint green on green on green on green? Value and hue. This is the hue part of it, where the yellow of the green versus the blue of the other green it just really creates some drama mm. i love that rinse out one more thing and then i'm gonna sip some coffee so while we're just sitting here i really like to come and get some just red just red okay and coming along just tipping this red on these buds Those really bring a lot of highlight. Look at that, just that little pop, and then they just feel like little red buds, don't they? Mm -hmm. The other thing that we're gonna do is we'll take some more of this red that we have and go ahead and release some petals. I'm gonna put some over here. Release some petals. Just placing that balance throughout your canvas. Oh, nice. I need a sip of coffee. Mm -hmm. I'm doing good, but I need a sip of coffee. <laughs> well, I'm going to have to say Woo. thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, you're going to go up there and take I'm going to go up here and We've sip some coffee uh, and say, woo, this is where we're at. I don't remember. I think it's like step three. Step three. This is pretty good. You know, I am, this is, I'm just always grateful for the community of people who come up and join us. You guys make it so much fun, Cinnamon. You don't get to see the chat. We keep the chat away from her because she tends to get distracted. I just stopped teaching the painting and I just chat with y'all. Like we got that over 1,200 people here. It's lovely to see all I of you guys. I have to hit the button again. Uh, it's Texas snowflake time. And we go, my knees go pop, my knees go pop, my knees go pop. And boots and cats and boots and cats. And we do this all. So what it is is that normally I have some music going, but I'm not <laughs> having my music working. So, and the, and the bubbles. There's a bubble. The bubble's like floating. It well, like, the bubble Ow! machine just like it just it just went. It just felt like it doesn't it, have any more bubble it, in it. Yeah, I mean, it it's attacked like my camera. You and a couple, but yeah, it attacked the camera over there too. So I have to fix that. Okay, bad bubble machine. Bad bubble. Here in Texas, snowflakes. We don't really get any snow. It speared my bubbles. It's so funny because people write me and be like, "I live in a tropical area, area and we don't have any snow, and and I need some tropical holiday paintings." And I'm like, "You'd think I would do more of those than anything else because I too have no snow." Like, if one snowflake lands on the ground in Houston, they shut down all the schools. It's just over. <laughs> it's just over for all of Houston. Oh, did it get that camera? It, it glommed it. Ben Hans is fixing, is fixing the camera. <sighs> We're doing good. Believe it or not, it goes pretty fast from here. I would say, you know, it's easier than you think. And then harder than you think, but not the stuff that you think is hard is hard. That yeah, part, right. like the techniques okay. are generally very chill. You can learn those. You can practice those. It's just about the stamina, about like having to reach high, reach low, you know, working a bigger canvas. And as long as you like pace yourself and you're like, all right, I'm just going to take five days to do it. You're good. I used to paint all big canvases and it's really just about making a plan, having a step ladder, getting big enough brushes and resting when you need to. I don't really need to because I do this all the time, but if you need to, that's very normal. Don't use me as your, as your litmus test of like how like physically demanding that is. It wouldn't be good. I think like oh, even my mom like sometimes will like be with me and she's like, I'm going to sit down. This is crazy. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> but she's done it too. She's done big 10 by 12 paintings, 10 foot by 12 foot, not 10 inch by 12. All right, Sherpa girl. Okay, We're back to the canvas. I was just stalling. We we're just stalling. I was stalling for some more coffee. You get, I'll get you more coffee. 
Okay, so I'm putting on some more Cad Red. And I'm gonna add to this some of my Cad Red Light. Now, for some of you, this might be more in the Cad Red Orange stage. This, by the way, this bubble have thickened and they become like a glycerin of slick that my hands can barely handle. <laughs> That's funny. And I'm really struggling to hold on to these tubes. You, you, I put the washcloth, uh, there's a towel right there to your left over the other side of the water bottles. Yeah. You can de-slickerize things. I don't know. I'm just going to let it. I'm so like, whatever. <laughs> I'm going to put some black out as well. I'll tell you all the colors that I've just put out. That's not the color I want. I want cadmium yellow. This is going to go pretty fast now, you think, It's huh? going to go pretty darn fast. It's shockingly, amazingly, surprisingly fast. The, the, uh, the gourd just comes in, so to speak. It just comes in. i got to find the black. Oof, it's just a whole thing, man. All right. I still recommend bubbles, though. I think they make my studio more fun, even though they are clearly problematic. All right. So a couple things that we're going to do here. We're going to put our buttons in, right? These are the little details inside of our poppies that really make them interesting. Huh? You're on the palette? All right. So doxazine purple, cad red medium, cad red light, but use an orange here if you don't have that. Quinacridone magenta, that's for the roses. Cad yellow medium, yellow ochre. This is carbon black, but you could just use Mars black. Burnt sienna with one of my, go away hair. <laughs> <laughs> Don't need you in my canvas. Burnt sienna, thalo green. And over here is thalo blue, but it's a little worn out. So I'm going to okay. put a little more thalo blue in as we go. And then titanium white in the center. And I may add some fresh titanium white because, again, as you paint... Uh, throughout the day, the paint can dry if you're not using a wet palette. And you may not be using a wet palette. Now, for this next part, my go-to brush is a number four round. So this is an Art Sherpa number four round. It's just a nice brush that gives you a nice point. That's the goal here. Anything in that range is good. You're going to take a little bit of your green and your brown. Are you using, what, what brand of paint are you using? I'm using a mix of Artist Loft Level 3, Senlier Acrylic, uh, and Golden, and Holbein. Which are, the, which are the brands, sometimes I'll add Matisse to my brands, but I haven't been to Jerry, so I haven't bought any Matisse in a while. Um, and then there's a PBO, I think is pretty good too. I have a little group of brands that I like. Ooh. Just a little bit of that in the center. That's just the brown. Now, I don't know I'm going to easily be able to put this guy here unless I change the height of that pedal. And I really like it, so I'm going to do it. I'm going to change the height of my pedal. And that'll just be a fix that I do. All right. So what I'll do here, right? is I will just move that pedal down a bit and you can see me do it with my brush here. So it'll come up and then allowing that to peek out. So if you get a little enthusiastic like I did with your pedals and you're like, but I lost my center, that's how you get your center back. That's how you get your center back, yo. <laughs> okay. And then the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of paint in the base of the pumpkin. And the pumpkin's base is going to start out Let's take a little bit of our burnt sienna and some of our diox purple on my big number 12 round. And I'm going to come here and begin to talk about the ribbing. See how we're doing? Yeah. And just the ribbing and segments of the pumpkin. Yep. Okay, you got to go talk to Miss Honey John. Okay. Like, seriously. <laughs> I'm going to keep painting in this pumpkin. Yeah. Thank you so much. All right. There we go. So you can kind of see that we're starting to talk about those little divots. I'm going to come here and I'm adding some more purple and docks and just come around. Uh, 
I'm just coming around the pumpkin. That's the dock's purple. Now here at the water, it will be cut off, right? Because the water. All right. So that kind of begins to talk about that. And I like to, oh my gosh, you're an angel. And I even get a new mug? Where am I at? I get a new mug. Hmm. No Splenda. Oh. Sorry. I'm making healthy life choices, but not that healthy. <laughs> so I'm going to take a little of my red and my purple, and then I will go ahead and start to get that first layer of pumpkin in. I'm using my purple and red again, and I'm just getting this layer of my pumpkin in. Thank you for putting up with what John gets me coffee. Coffee keeps me going on these lessons. I am powered by coffee. Immediately after this, I think I'm going to watch Dora the Explorer with the kids. <laughs> Two. I live large. It's okay, just do. I'm just coming along there, just filling this in. This is just a little bit of the Doc's purple, a little bit of the Doc's purple, and the CAD red medium in my number 12 round brush. And I'm doing a pretty good pressure. And you can see what I'm trying to do is exaggerate these little lines, aren't I? And I honestly, I really love painting in the pumpkin. Thank you so much, babe. You are my hero. I love, love, love painting in the pumpkin because the shape is so delightful to my mind. It's all bumpy and delicious and great. And gourds are always interesting to paint. Gourds are interesting to paint. All right, and so you see it's just that first layer of pumpkin. The pumpkin comes up in a series of layers that we build up. And this pumpkin technique, by the way, will work across any paintings that you're doing. So if you're really wanting to do some more pumpkins before the fall season is completely gone, you know, please just enjoy this, not just here, but anywhere. I like green eggs and ham. Just not, I will eat them here and there. I will paint them everywhere. So that's pretty good. So now we have that first layer of pumpkin in, and we can really kind of see it like if we just get the purple and we kind of see its little beginnings of the stock stem and its little segments that are happening. And I can rinse that out, give that a small rest. While we're giving that a rest, we can start to finish out these fabulous red flowers which are a lot of fun i think i'm gonna sip my coffee i need my coffee how are you guys doing really good i this think is... we're about the halfway point we're just past the halfway point mm, i'm not yeah just about is where i think we're at is about there so how it's like here tell me how you guys are doing hold on a second i'm on i'm on a different screen is all right shh, shh, I look good go. oh my sides are good side tell me how you're doing definitely you know what even after the show i read the comments so if you tell me what was easy for you you tell me what was difficult. You come to a video and you leave a comment. And you tell me your experience. I try to take all that feedback to help me teach a better free class. So it's wonderful to hear from me. If you like something, tell me so there's more of it. If you don't like something, tell me and we may be able to change it. We can't change everything. because Some things just are how they are. But the feedback always helps us kind of tune in and improve. So definitely always speak up and let us know what's going on. Take a deep breath. There it goes. There. So I lost my main computer for a minute, and I was really panicking. Yeah, I heard your panicky voice. <laughs> <laughs> These so, live shows are harder than you think. We got over 1,300 people here. So it's like like there's a couple people hanging out. It's Thank like, you so much. Yeah. I cannot wait to see. If you're here, I can't wait to see your painting. You know, throw up some emojis, even if you're shy. Say hi to the crew. I mean, if you, if you need to tell us who you are in little flowers and Christmas trees, that's cool. We love it. If you're late, bring the donuts. <laughs> Cupcakes are also good because since I'm on Healthy Life Choices, I only get to eat virtual donuts and cupcakes, which I do not love. Do not love it at all. <laughs> but throw up the emojis. Say hi to everybody. Ask questions. Even if we miss a question, 
Chances are somebody here knows the video for that, the link for that, or has an idea where your information is. And we have information on so much stuff. Mm -hmm. Breath, relax it out. Ooh, right? And them shoulders, get them shoulders going. Uh, you feeling better? You're doing a big canvas there. Yeah, this is the, I think this is the biggest one we've done. It's not the biggest one I've done in my life by any means, but it's the biggest one that I've done on the show. It, it's one I wanted to do for a while. I had to get brave. If it works out, I'll do more. So let me know in those comments if you'd like to see a holiday version of this with like berries and chickadees and snow and pine cones and pine trees. Something really kind of kind of winterish and spirit of winter. And then if that goes well, we'll do spring and summer. Because look, we got fall. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's hop back in. All right. So this is going really well. We're going to get back into... Right, so far, so far on this lesson, what we've got is a big chunky round brush, a small detail round brush, and this cat's tongue from our Sherpa. But remember, you could use a round, like a number eight round, or a number eight filbert from any good brush line. Don't feel stressed. You are forbidden. No stressing. No stressing. I'm going to take a little of my pad red medium, and I'm going to come here up to this upper right flower and I'm going to pull down on the petal a very light little highlight. See that light little highlight? I do. That's all we're doing. Just a light little highlight. My pressure on this is very gentle. I'm not pushing a lot of energy or weight through my shoulder down the brush onto the canvas. And that lets the paint, sometimes I'll get comments like, man, you just do one little brush stroke and it's like, it's a whole thing. It's about that brush pressure. It's about that brush pressure. Now you'll also notice that as I come along the little edge of these to highlight them, I'm still continuing to curve the brush stroke if I need to the direction that I'm implying the petal is going. Isn't that fun? Yeah. And at this stage, you start to see the layering of the petals, like what petal is in front of what face. So that's a good thing to do. We already have our red highlights, so all we've got to do is these flowers over here on the left. I need a second layer of this bright red, and then I'll have to come in with my second red to kind of pull that out. But for right now, I'm good. There we go, those little far petals. Isn't that wonderful how they layer on each other? Mm-hmm. Just playful, just loose, just enjoying it. Now I'm going to get a little of my light orange on here, which is my cad red light. And I'm going to maybe add a bit of that to this side. And you can kind of see why, right? Yeah. Because it pulls these petals from those back petals. And you don't own, this is the one place in life you really want a back petal. Sorry. I'm going to go ahead and pop a few of these highlights. I'll start over here. Not too many. Just a couple. I find that they add a lot of depth. To the piece. See how few little highlights we did? It was just mm -hmm. a little kiss, kiss, kiss. Kiss, kiss, kiss. Kiss, kiss, kiss. It's your groove thing. All right. So what's next is kind of weird. I'm going to take a little of my green over here, and I'm going to get just some of my white into it. And it makes a very 
bright green. And I'm going to come and highlight one side of the center of each flower. And I'm going to do that across here. That's pretty good. Now, I personally think it's helpful to use fluid paint. But remember, you can also use Deco Art. That's a really good fluid paint with a, lot, a nice amount of pigment in it for this next thing. You don't have, I love this product, but you don't have to run out and buy that if that's not like available to you or attainable at this time. Right? And the other thing you can do is you can also, you know, thin your white with water. Okay. Now I'm going to take a little of my white and some of my yellow and I'm going to load it on my number four round. And I'm going to draw all these little stamens. Coming out of each. Aren't those wild? Mm hmm Have a blast with them. You could use a smaller detail brush, but this one is adequate for me, so I'm going to stay here. What I do when I want to reload is I roll it out, and then I just get back on the tip of the brush, and let's come right here again. Okay, we're doing good. This is great. This is gorgeous, and now it's going to start to happen, guys. Now it's going to start to happen. Big florals are doable. And I'm so glad you guys are excited about it because I was excited about it, but I didn't know if I was alone in my excitement about this idea. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes I have ideas where I'm like, this is really great. And everyone's like, it's really weird, Sherpa, but we love you anyways. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm going to add some of these in here. I think that they make a nice little kind of accents thing peeking out. Right, like little stamens might. And then we'll come around here and hit this all again, right? You know, long enough to be able to put those little poppy seeds. I, if you live in an area that has these poppies, like if Mona came today, I bet you she's got these in her garden. Probably the size of dinner plates. Now, on our scale of one to three, is it, how difficult is this one? The techniques are a high one hoot, Low two hoot, I believe. But we always let you guys go by and viewer re-rate things. So in case I'm just out of my mind, you can warn other students coming by. <laughs> but I would say what makes it the hardest is just the scale. This is this is a simple flower I would floral I would normally teach uh, before pulling you guys into our three hoot floral, which is very very realistic. Um, but the thing about it is, is that sometimes if you go big, that that can add an extra level of difficulty for you just physically. So you know, on this, calibrate, like, I've never painted big, and if it's wearing you out, raise that up to a three hoot, even though the techniques are super achievable. Yes. Does that make sense? It does. I hope so. All right, Sherpa. All right, The you. big painting. I'm going to keep painting. I'm going to take my little brush here. The big, big paint. And I'm going to get into my cad yellow with my green, and I'm going to get some white into it. Make sort of this very light color. And then I'm going to, inside each of these, make a series of weird lines. Is it important? I feel it is. You like those weird lines I inside really your like poppies? I like the weird lines inside my poppies. The little stripies. I'm super into the stripies. I'm over here and stripey my poppy. <laughs> Let me start my poppies. Get the little highlights on them. Get the little highlights on them. Well, these, there's these little ridges, right? And then they have that sort of center. Are you saying poppies have ridges? Poppies have ridges. I'm going to get a little white here. And then we'll just make a little dot in the center there. And that strange little structure, right? That's pretty good. And guess what we get to do next? Um, you need to get some black. Mm -hmm. You get it on the tip of your brush. So see, I, I didn't have I have fluid black paint, but I'm just going to use thinned heavy body paint. 
and you're going to make little dots. All around here. These are your little seeds. Oh, See? neat. You can also, at this stage, it might help sometimes to come underneath and line that little circle. See how we're doing? Oh, good little accent. Yeah, sometimes that helps. Just define it. These are the little seeds that are dotting around. Dot these little seeds around. Dot them, dot them, dot them, dot them, dot them. There we go. You did it. Yeah. You did it. You know, and you can take this time, like you can come and get the chalk out of there. Look at us go. Just get taking that chalk out like it's nothing. Like it's nothing. Well, because it is nothing. That's why we use the chalk like we do. <laughs> the now whole point of using chalk in the way that we do is because it's nothing. I just threw some links up here for for Sasha. She was asking if uh, we had links on how to do some good trees. So <laughs> I put a link up to our website. If you go out there to theartsherpa.com and well, click good. on the video link, you'll see that there you can put, type in search. And in that search, we have, oh, about 900 different videos that you can check stuff out on. Yeah. So there's a couple things out there. There's lots of trees and things. brushes. There's a few, there's a few enjoyable things that we've yeah. got, like 900 lessons that are free. There's we a couple. Just, we painted some stuff. It's easier to say, I haven't painted a manatee yet. Ooh, we should do that. It's easier to say what I haven't painted than what I have painted. I should paint a manatee. We should do a manatee. I know. Manatees we got to paint a pumpkin, up. though. Don't That's what Acrylic April makes up for, is like, we meet every day and paint every day live to help beginners get into a practice of daily painting. Mm -hmm. And I cover a lot of topics over Acrylic April. I'm like, boom, catching up on things I haven't painted yet. Woo, woo, woo. Wow. What? I think that we're at a linear mile of paintings if we if we were to do that right now. If you guys put your paintings up that you're doing today side by side, we'd have a mile of art. Because I think so. There's just 1,373 people. Whew. And then. You can do this. You really, you really actually can. I'm not, I'm not just messing with you. It's really doable. If you practice and you persist and you do the techniques and you follow along and you're easy with yourself and you just keep doing it, all of a sudden you're like, wait, where are these 40 paintings on my wall come from? It's amazing how it works like that. Hmm. Well, almost so. So, so 5,200 feet, uh, 5,280. John is doing math and switching. <laughs> <laughs> math and switching is hard. 5,200 feet. That is crazy. So we would need... We need 1,700 people to have a mile. We're almost at a mile. We're like three quarters of a mile. Go get the rest of those people so we can say we did a mile of art today. 1,700? 1,760. 1,760 is we're the goal. At 1,400 right now. to say we did a mile of art today. Yeah, we're at 1,400. I'm yeah, just completely assuming that anyone watching today is at all painting along. <laughs> <laughs> so the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take my quinacridone magenta and a little bit of my cad yellow, and I mix them together with my number eight cat's tongue. Again, remember, what could you use? You could use a number eight round. You could use a number eight filbert. You just want a brush that gives you a nice tip. I'm going to come get a little of my white into this. It's very loosely mixed, and we're going to begin the messy roses. Now, I love messy roses. Love them. Sometimes when you're new to painting, because you guys are so hard on yourself, you struggle with your messy roses. But basically what they are is you go on the tip of your brush and you come around, you make a C and then a counter C. I'm going to decide that the opening of my rose is up top. So my brush strokes will get firmer and bigger as I come around. Now I'm going to paint my pumpkin back over these so I don't got to worry if they layer into him a little bit. Let's put a little tucked in messy rose right here. There we go. I'm 
It's really not about being perfect. These roses are my favorite because they're just so chill about what they are. I'm going to add some right here. I think definitely when it comes across the border. Now, if you guys are doing um, a like a couple's paint, like a best friend painting, sister painting, boyfriend, girlfriend painting, and these live in a different house, it's fun to bring elements like this across the border of the two canvases so that the piece can go live in both places. Do a little, we're just really filling this up. So imagine that these are filling up. We don't do these front ones until after because they're like literally the last thing on the canvas is the front roses. Literally? Literally! They're written last? Add some petals to your artwork and ignore John. <laughs> <laughs> there we go just adding that layering of the pink petals to fill in and create balance now i may have to bring some roses over my poppy because of where i put it or i could choose to be very precious and not do that and that is really up to you you have to decide on your floral arrangement how you want your roses to be i may go ahead and put some pink petals here and kind of keep that forward facing because i got so close to my pumpkin it's really about what you want to do. Right? You could you could be like, "No, I'm going to put a petal in front of you." Ha! Take it, Rose. Take it, take it, Poppy. Let's come right here. And again, I get a little bit of white at first. So this first layer into the roses is kind of very pink and very loose, isn't it? Mhm. Mm not particularly worried. It's just these weird, look, swish, 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 swish. Swish, it's, swish. It's just hot, messy circles all around each other. Swishy let's put, flowers. Let's put a little fellow out here just for balance. Now, these are the under swishes, right? This is just the first layer of swishiness. Even the first layer of petals. We're having fun and we're going to go for it. We're going to probably come right over here. Now, Cheryl was asking, do you think it's easier to paint bigger or is it harder? It's physically more demanding, but I feel like for the actual project, it's a lot easier. More enjoyable? Mm -hmm. For me. That's, that's my experience of it totally, is that it's just a lot more fun for me to paint bigger. I'm going to take a little of my yellow and my pink together. Um, it's easier to see the project, what's going on with it by a lot. And it's easier to make, you know, compositional decisions because you can really take it in and you're not so in your painting. Um, but physically it does build up. It is hard to build up that stamina. So I'm taking this yellow and pink mixture to the center of these at first. See how we're doing? Yeah. And we'll do these on this side, and then we'll switch over to the other side. Now, I'm going to add this to some of my petals as like a second reflection. You can always go more pink if you want to. Okay. Whatever you feel. And then I find that... Um, as long as it's not drying on me, I can take the centers out. More pink in there. Because remember, we've got the grouping coming down around the sides. So you've got more flowers to do. Please pay attention to how just very relaxed these are. I'm just, these are so loose. And there isn't really a right or wrong. What I find happens with students is they're very unforgiving of their loose kind of relaxed flowers. Super kind about everybody else's. So try to be kind about your flowers too. There we go. That's looking good. Now I'm going to kind of wipe off my brush with my towel and just get into my white now, which has just a bit of pink into it. And let's finish out these pink messy flowers. Look at them go. 
Isn't that fun? Yeah, it's amazing. Messy flower. I keep the darks in the center, and I just build up these outer layers of, like, light pink. And that's where the flowers kind of come from. As you push out, when you're doing these, like your brush strokes will get a little heavier on the outside edge. That's like the bigger petals. Fun stuff. That's really come together. It does. It just starts to, to come together really fast. And you can always come and get a little yellow and even more white into it and add here and there. Now, and she was saying she's feel sometimes feels a little rushed around painting because she's worried it'll dry. Do you have any um, suggestions for dealing with anxiety around that? Uh, have a humidifier running in your studio. Have a micro mister. Um, if it's drying on you, like, uh, these are like little, the ones that they have for like little nails. You can get the bigger ones from art stores. I don't know where my bigger one is right now. And you can mist your canvas. You can mist your palette. Um, you can also. Oh, behind like, you. Huh? The, the, the perfume misters yeah. behind you. Like there's the perfume misters. I mean, any of those that just do a small micro droplet, but Hey, I've done like the big fat water droplet misters too, if I've had to. Yeah. So just be like. You know, pay attention to the kind of day it is. If you're running a lot of heater, if you're running a lot of air conditioner, it'll pull a lot of moisture out of your air and can accelerate how fast your paint dries. And then finally, my very favorite product on the planet for slowing down the drying time of paint is acrylic glazing liquid gloss. It is the only retarder that is beginner friendly because it doesn't ever have a mixture ratio where the paint can fail. You can take it all the way to a tint and glaze with it and there is no other product uh, that does that. A lot of products are called glazing, that's not what they are. They're a different product altogether. Just Golden Artist Colors, acrylic glazing liquid. You can get it in Michaels. You can get it online. I highly recommend it to slow down the drying time of your paint. That's my big, you know. That makes sense. Kind of thing with that. You know, just keep layering these up and take them to the colors that you like, you know. If you if you want them to be lighter, have them be lighter. If you want them to be pinker, have them be pinker. There's no there's no wrong. And just know that my flowers, like John's gonna get right up on these. These are very messy. They're very messy little little creatures. I'm gonna bring this little grouping probably around like after. When I have more of my pumpkin in, but that's what I do for those rinsing out, rinsing out, rinsing out. Let's put our, the rest of our little pumpkin in. All right. I may go ahead and pull up some of my extra chalk that I have about. That I don't need. All right. So I can see what I've got. If you end up with holes or anything, you can, we're going to come back and we fill it with leaves. So we're never, ever stuck. You're never, ever stuck. You're mm. always fine. Always. Like if I need to bring some roses down here, I'll do that. Because that looks very empty. So what could I do there? More leaves or more roses. Those are the choices. So I'm going to begin by uh, working some of my cad red medium, my cad red light, which you could use orange too, and my cadmium yellow to build up my pumpkin. Hmm. So the first thing is let's, let's get a little of our ribs reset. I'm just bringing some brown to do that. And then I'm going to take a little of my orange color and my cad red medium color, and I'm going to begin to paint in my pumpkin. I'm going to go ahead and let these flowers kind of like overlay here because I really enjoy it. 
but I could bring the pumpkin back over them. It's whatever I want. If I want them to be on top, I can have them be on top. If I want them to be on the bottom, it's just about how they show here, right? Let's bring this here. I don't need the ribs to go all the way to the end. But I do need to create a sense of line and form with this. See how I'm just brush stroking those up? Yeah. And those brush strokes just create a lot of interest and that sort of like swooping edge really helps inform it that it's a gourd. All right. There we go. Just pulling that. See, I go down and I come up. Mm -hmm. I'm using my brush stroke and the loosely mixed paints to also help this pumpkin, you know, kind of come to life. I love the layers of him. Makes me so happy. And swoop it around. Get more if you need it. The pumpkin is coming in. The pumpkin comes in real fast and is super enjoyable. <laughs> Just because it, it, you know, it wants to layer. It's what it wants to do. It has a layer. It wants to layer. It loves the shape. The paint loves it. It's, uh, you could take it into a ghost pumpkin. You could do a blue pumpkin. You know, fantasy pumpkin, you can make it dark, you can make it light. It just lends itself to a lot of artistic thought. And as long as you have these lined up, it really, the canvases separate up beautifully. And then you just have to hang them level if you're hanging them together or if you're hanging them separately. That's, I think, very romantic to me. That's a romantic thing to me. The idea that you have like a bestie or a partner that you've got your surface shared with these great paintings because each side is individually a wonderful painting. I'm using a little more red here on the outer edges. Bringing that up, as you can see. See how we're doing? Mm hmm Get a little water on my brush. And you can see every time I layer up, it just gets, what, better, doesn't it? That's what the layering is like. The layering just really helps this beautiful gourd become the gorgeous that it's meant to be. I did say <laughs> that. I'm sorry. That's, I know, I, I'm like... Yeah, I, actually, I'm not going to say it could be any different. The dorkery will continue. That's never going to go away. That's true. I am going to have weird hair. <laughs> that just hopefully to the end. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> be a strange person. And I truly hope to the end. That's who I was meant to be. All right. See how this is just... The layers just build up. Again, if you're painting like a very inexpensive paint, if you're having trouble covering, what's our, what's our trick? We paint it white underneath and we dry it and then paint over it. Mm. But don't give up. Don't give up. It's, this is a bit gordy. It is a bit gordy. <laughs> it's a very gordy painting. Now I'm going to take a little of my dock's purple and some of my red and I'm going to make this dark color. And I am going to just very carefully 
kind of mark out these lines where these segments will be. And I'm going to maybe take a little dark bunch of colors and right here in the center, I'm going to make the first part of my stem, not all of the stem, just the first part of my stem. Just so I can see where it is. And that will help me kind of put those where I want those to be, if that makes sense to you guys. Because when you know where your stem is, you know where you want your um, little ribbles to come out. Mm. Rinse out thoroughly. Get all that pigment out. Sometimes it takes two jars. And let's come into the cad red light, which is like an orange. And I may even add the smidge of some yellow to it now. And this time we're going to come from the top and brush down. See how we're doing from the top and we're brushing down? Yeah. Look at how it pops that in, doesn't it? Take your yellow if you need it. Brushing down. How nice is that, right? So it gets a little dark there at the center, and then it gets a little kind of darker at the edges, and that gives you a little bit of shading. And the shape of this, where the pumpkin is sort of forward facing and we have the stem going off, I think it's super exciting. I'm kind of excited I have two of these. Mm. <laughs> Just think about it. It's you true. I have two of these big paintings. Uh, it's a neat painting to have a big one in it for. Uh, now, you're, you taped those canvases together on the back to help. Yes. There's a gaffing tape on the back. You could use duct tape. And it's just the idea is to keep them leveled and together so that during the painting process, they line up. And then later, if I want, I can hang them in two separate frames, even separate from each other. As long as I hang them level, it will continue to be good. Mm. That makes sense. All right. So I'm going to come in with some yellow and a little bit of orange, right? And let's come right here. See how we're shaping this out? Yeah. Wonderful. A little yellow, a little orange. Seasonal. This is a heritage pumpkin. It really is, actually. And then the last part I'm going to do is I'm going to take a bit of my yellow into my orange. I'm going to make a very light yellow orange, and I'll get some white into it. You see right there? And then I'm going to go around and I'm going to make a couple reflections. Isn't that nice? These are just the hot spots on the on the surface of the pumpkin that the light is catching. Having fun, I really am. Mm. <sighs> it's good times. Ah, it's awesome. All right, so this has to dry for a second, and we are nearly almost done, guys. Are we? we yeah, just we have some really flowers in the are. water and some we are in our last third of the painting. I'm gonna sip some coffee. Oh. Oh, it's good. Isn't it turned out bumpy? really nice. It's this is so good. I cannot good. wait to see y'all's version. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go forward. Awesome. Oh, look at it. This is shiny. It did. It turned out really nice. Mm -hmm. So let's see here. <gasps> did you have some suggestions? Like if you wanted to learn how to paint mm -hmm. uh, 
you know, different furs or hair color or things like that. Could you talk about where you might be able to find some of that stuff? So here on this channel, we have something called the Big Art Quest. And if you go to the 2016 BAQ, the original one, there's a bunch of like hour long videos on how to paint fur or hair. I also have a bunch of short videos. If you go to the website, theartsherpa.com, and you search uh, uh, hair or fur, a bunch of videos about those topics will pop up and you can kind of choose through. So there's like, not just one, there's a lot. <laughs> there's a lot. We even did a guy tang tribute. So we're really into like those drilled in videos. I'm gonna bubble this up because I just feel good. And my Texas snowflakes, they take me away. They're like all the fun of winter, but none of the shoveling of snow. However, the bubble machine is like, I give you no bubbles. It's just, it's just blown air at me now. <laughs> That's okay. Bubbles are gone. Did we run out of, oh wait, now it's starting to drip. I think it was just about to go and I gave up on it. It's like painting. Don't give up too early. Don't give up on your bubble machine too early, right? Enjoy that for a long time. Nope, it's done. It's just teasing me with bubbles. That's okay. You guys are wonderful. <laughs> So yeah, that's the thing is like, um, every technique is learnable. Every technique, there's just a ton of information out there about it. I have, with the number of videos that I have, and I'm sure people who've been here for a minute will tell you, it's weird hair, and weird hats all the time, but I do have a lot of art videos. <laughs> so, you know, if you're trying to learn how to paint, this is a really great place to do it because we have so much information. It's always focused to the beginner's experience. Yep. Are you guys ready to hop back in? Absolutely. Okay. Hey, babe, the bubble machine is like not playing nice. Oh, with the bubble machine, I think what happened was is that it, uh, the solution in it Got has thick. dried down a little bit and it's become too thick and viscousy. Mm. And so the bubbles are now like mega bubbles. They're heavy and glycerin y and they come out like they're ready for combat. Actually, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to let this dry a little bit longer. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna let this dry a little bit longer. I'm not gonna do my like it. I'm gonna finish out my jar. Do the jar. Do the jar. So I'm gonna take my phthalo blue and my phthalo green together and a smidge of white, which is that kind of jar turquoise color, you know, that we've been using. And I'm gonna come across my pumpkin. You guys ready? Ooh. That's important that you have some dryness so that you get the. Isn't that gorgeous, though? It does. It looks amazing. So that is a good part of it. And then I'm going to come along here. I think John has some more. I'm getting a little more white and blue. So that's kind of that basic structure, right, of, of what's going on with the jar. Now I'm going to come get more white. Some more white, and I'm going to come here and coming along this side of it, I'm going to dry brush some white down my glass. I'm going to come over here on this side and dry brush some white down my glass. And I might even go like that. That is just a little bit of glass that we're seeing. All right, that's a thing that's happening. On the surface of the water here, I'm going to get a bunch more white going. The surface is a little bit brighter. And I'll go ahead and paint all this up top. Kind of like that lighter white. And we are going to go around the pumpkin a bit because some of it is covered in covered in the water. Some of it is covered in the water, just brushing that back. And I'm just relaxedly filling that in. A little more white into that. I'm going to bring that up here. You can see that that water is starting a little more white into that. Come over here. Now I can go right into my like little white here and I can come along my pumpkin. But we're going to just make some little ripples. Oh, thank you. Uh, you going to reheat that? Thank you so much. It's okay though. We're still camera switching though. Okay. I'm saying I'm okay. I'm going to come under here. And on the top surface of this wire, you can see I'm adding a little highlight, aren't I? You can get some blue. And I'm going to add some just pure blue right here in that corner. And 
Now I might get a little bit of white and come around that back edge. Make some little loops there. Down into this, we will have like this crazy space where it's blues, it's turquoise, it's a bunch of the different colors. I'm going to go ahead and get some white onto my brush very loosely. Now, a question here. And I'm going to brush that down. If you use just straight glazing liquid mm -hmm. over the top of the water area, would it make look more watery and see through? No, it might be a little bit shiny, but you could use any gloss medium to get that effect. I'm okay. going to switch into my bigger brush. So yeah, if you put something that's glossy over the top, it will make it more glossy. That won't necessarily enhance the effect. I'm just taking some blue and brushing this in because I want it to kind of shape around. So what it'll do is it'll just make it shinier. And at that point, you might as well just do a gloss medium, you know, for what you've got going on. I'm taking this blue right here. I'm going to go ahead and get some white onto my brush. And just dry brush, maybe a little bit of reflection there that the glass bowl might have, see? And then come back with a little bit of this blue. I'm going to come down the side of the bowl with a little bit of my blue and loosely brush this across. I'm going to rinse out. This will have to dry for a little bit, but I do want to catch if I've got any kind of loose around my, my surface, a little bit of my pumpkin color. I want you to add some of it. Both sides. Oh, thank you, babe. Very loosely. Because what's in the water will, if you see it around the water, it's going to be in the water. It's like if you're like, oh, well, I've got a lot of green, then you're going to want to take some green and yellow, right? And go ahead and add a little of that to the reflection of the surface of your water. I'm going to add some right here. Okay. Those things would be in your space. And then I'm going to go ahead and get some just white. I'm going to take some just white. I'm going to come around the edge of this bowl. And I may even come along the edge here. No, and then across where the pumpkin is. Just to talk a bit about what's here. Because what you have is you have like reflections. Now I want to dry brush some white over here, but I'm going to need it to dry. That really always helps with dry brushing. <laughs> I may just take this to a darker space and bring that across. Now all I've got to deal with is my stem and my stem is going to come up, it's going to uh, like, and I might, I'm tempted to bring it back this way from where it's positioned, where it's going to make a little, let's even exaggerate it some. There we go. Just a little bit of weird wander over towards the left. Let's get some brown and some black together. I'm using my number 12 round just so that the big thick stem is easy to paint. It joins right here into the pumpkin. And the first part of it is a very dark brown, and it can be kind of hard to see on the black of the canvas. Let's 
brushing that back very smoothly. There we go. So that is the darkest part of the stem. And we'll be using like yellow ochre and burnt sienna. And we're going to do the twisted stem and I'll show you how to do a twisted stem. While that is having a dry, so you can do the twisted stem, guess what you get to do now? Hmm. You get to do more pink flowers. More pink flowers. There's just never enough pink flowers. Keep flowering it up. Yeah, so we're going to take a little bit of our yellow, like we did before, into our pink. You can always grab that bit of white. And we're going to come through here and add some more flowers. Let's fill this space up with flowers. And the flowers are going to come forward a bit, coming through this way. Mmm, more flowers. You can never have too many. Well, maybe you can, but at this point, I'm just like, the nice thing about a painted floral arrangement is there's no budget that you have to stick to with your <laughs> flowers. You can just be like, it's the amount of money I felt like spending. Everybody agrees, more pink flowers. Let's get those little basics in, those flower basics. And you can just bring them down, you know, as you want to. And I'm going to have a bunch of little vines and things. But right now, I just want to get these in. Let's add one right here, guys. I feel like if we have one right there, that's going to be very good. Pink and yellow. Working it out. Just again, doing that swirling around strip, right? Mm-hmm. Let's add some over here. Super swirl. We need some flowers over here, I feel, don't you feel? I don't know. This is really kind of a you thing. <laughs> I'm good at, I'm like a professional watch paint dry person. Well, I, I can, can vote in. tell you more about how color shifts as it dries than... Anyone except for the people that may be golden. <laughs> That's the conversation. That's your uh, uh, first husband conversation point. <laughs> <laughs> With the exception of the true professionals. <laughs> <laughs> I will talk to you about color shifts. It's true. All right, so we've got those first little layers in, right? That's pretty good. And then we're going to come here and we're going to get, I'm going to put out a little more white into this and we will add more white as we want to and remember guys you can keep playing with your flowers you can come back and be like oh like if, if even at this point if you're like oh the peach and the yellow and i'm gonna go white and you want to come back into these always always you can for as long as you want until you're happy i'm doing this right now so everything kind of unifies Away on me there. I'm gonna come right here and do this one. We are doing a big canvas. Like I put it up and I said we were doing it, but clearly yeah. I was not lying. And I feel okay, guys. Like I could do another one of these. So if these are fun, we can do more. Oh, I like that one. I love to build these little flowers up and see where they take me. Because you never know where they're going to go.
You never know how the flower is going to go for you. We have a pretty good idea, but. And I can always come here and add some, look at this, little petals. I'm going to come over here, babe. And even get some pink petals over the pumpkin if I felt like it. Look at that. Mm -hmm. so these things layer can layer up. in. You can layer, 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 layer. Come back with pink if you need to to darken the centers. The trick is for me, I like to have the centers be a little bit darker and the outer petals get lighter and lighter as they go. See how we do? I do. I see how you do. You can't escape from my eyes, my robot eyes. We do like a leaf hopper do. Ah, uh, the Frank. Ah, uh, the Frank. I don't think it is the Frank anymore, though. I think it's a guy that sounds like the Frank, but is not the Frank. I, I, you know what? I hope the Frank calls you out on that on the halls of some video conference someday. And say, that Sherpa, would be fun. I do all my own the Franking. Thank you very much. <laughs> I mean, because I would do so much better than the last time. So. <laughs> You want to see Cinnamon freak out and have like a total uh, fangirl moment? Yeah, fangirl. She's like the Frank roll, the rolls. Only up. way to shut me up. <laughs> <sighs> there we go. So just you know, put your little petals here. Remember that they can go flying out all throughout. Flying petals. Flying petals anywhere you want. Rinse out thoroughly and get your number four round. Number four. Number four. We're going to rinse it and we're going to do a cool thing. We're going to take some yellow and some green together as you do. Making quite a light color. I'm going to add a drop of water to improve the flow. And we're going to pull in some, like, vines, guys. Just some loose little vines. Interesting vine. Anywhere. And then some vines that go this way. But I wanted some that way vines. You could that way your vines. There, look. Well, that way. Anywhere you feel that you've got a vine, vine away. It can be this way or that way. It can be any way they want to be. Any way. Doing good. And then I, I want you to grab some white. I'm using my fluid white to improve flow. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to... Take this very bright yellow green and make these funny little leaves. You see funny, little leaves. funny little leaves. So they've got a lot of yellow, a little bit of green, and some white in them to get that light, kind of like spring green color that will pop out on this particular piece. There we go. Doing good, doing good, doing good. We'll add some buds in a second. Blood mm. wiser. We'll add some buds. 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 Some little tiny flowers. Anywhere we want, but right now I just want to kind of layer up my foliage. <laughs> this is quite a big still life thing. No, that's that was the whole thing. Big canvas still life. Big canvas still life. But you can Very do impressive. it. 
like here's the layers they're doable i still feel good here at the end of the day you know like, but again i paint a lot and so there's a lot of stamina in my shoulder and my body for this mm -hmm. if you are having a not fun time and you need to rest you know that's what the pause button is for I'm there's seeing... a whole bunch of people that watch me on mute and i ain't even offended <laughs> Your little vining is coming in fast. And then you just have to finish the. It's like over in a minute. Wow. This is so come together so fast. I say that as we're like almost approaching two and a half hours. But that's not bad. If you no. think what we've managed to do in no, that this, time. We'll get this done in under two and a half. I think it's like two, five, two 13 minute, right? Now. Yeah, we'll be done in under two and a half. I'll, I'll be surprised if we're not done at under two and a half. So I'm going to go ahead and get my pink now. I'm going to take my pink and my white. I thought that was magenta. That's true. It's magenta. See? Quinacridone magenta. I can see colors now. And you're going to drop little pink buds. You have more white in some of them. Aren't those fun? Oh, I forgot some leaves here. Did you? Yeah, it's okay. I will. They feel leafed out. I will add the buds and then add the leaves. It's, it's the order is not important. <laughs> Don't leave me out. Oh, that's nice. Every time I do these, I just get a little more into it. Mm -hmm. The little pink buds work for me so much. Hey, look, they're little flowers, the loofy. They just look so pretty. And they just feel nice. You know, they're like pleasant and enjoyable and they tie the piece together. And I like the stem on the gourd. That's that's the favorite part of the whole piece. Yeah, it's, def it's a great centralizing item that brings focus to the center of the painting and keeps drawing you back to the middle. Which just really, really makes you feel good inside. Just doing that pull. See, I'm just tapping the brush and pulling. Yeah. That's what we're doing now. We're going to just tap and pull these leaves and buds. You can even add green to the buds if you want. Plant them. It's allowed. It's allowed. All of it's allowed. It's your art. So it's all like allowed. There we go. Now what? Just yeah. the gourd. A few reflections and then we're there. So the first thing that I'm going to do, I'm still on my number uh, four round, is I'm going to get a little of my burnt sienna and my yellow ochre. And we're going to twist the vine. And to twist the vine, what I find is I'm going to come here to the curve. And I'm going to begin talking about the way the vine twists with this mix of burnt sienna and yellow ochre. And it's like a like a little candy striping that we're doing. Mm -hmm. That we do. I'm going to come in and get some just burnt sienna. I will thin that with some water on my brush. And I'm going to begin to paint that around. So this is that sort of, this will work for grape vines too. If you wanted to do a piece with a bunch of grapes, mm. this would work for that. Oops. Okay, it's not going to hurt it. <laughs> just adds a little color that integrates throughout the painting. It's just, when you get stuff like that, you just kind of roll with it. I'm always like, happy accident. Blendy it in. Some yellow ochre and blended it in. Look at that. It was almost, it was intentional. Uh, it wasn't, but I wasn't stressed about it. And, you know, think about it. If I can paint it live and stuff like that can happen and I'm not stressed, you guys don't need to be stressed at all. Mm -hmm. In any way. I'm going to put a little more of my burnt sienna out. 
maybe a little more than that. And then just keep painting the little swirls of this kind of vine as they go out. Now you can get right into your black. I'm going to thin my black a good bit. You could also use fluid black like we did with the white on those stems. I'm going to add a shadow underneath the stem. We'll add these deep value highlight uh, shadows. And these will help us really show where the stem is turned. You guys see how that's done? Yeah. As the stem turns. Mm -hmm. As the stem turns. You'll have the gourd of your life. I have the gourd of my life. Sorry. I really shouldn't sing. I just do. Us continuing to enjoy the twist of that vine. Now it can be real fun to take our yellow ochre and a little bit of our fluid white and make a light color. It's kind of like our little highlight. And we're just painting over like the top little edges. You just find a little spot and we kind of almost ended up with a highlight there already. Mm -hmm. You know, and just enjoy twisting that vine. I'm going to come out here. Just come back if you need to to regulate the twist. And you can always go back with some burnt sienna all through your vine. Okay. Just to help it vine up. How is that? That's looking pretty amazing. That works out really, really well. Now, I'm going to take a little of my black. And I do like to kind of create a shadow there. And I may kind of strengthen that dark value under my vine where the twist is. See how we're doing to create a mm -hmm. shadow? Just so you can really see it. I see it. Those contrasty. Yeah. And then, you know, catching a little of your white and your yellow. Just to accentuate the bend. There you go. You just really want to be able to see it as a highlight, as a low light. Mm -hmm. Now. Take this half second left, and you look for anything that's bugging you. In your last few minutes of wrapping up your painting. Mm -hmm. If there's an area oh, that needs that. blue, put it around. If you you've just, got whatever like you've got to do to balance out your piece. I try to catch you doing it. That's what you do at that stage. You just look all around. What do I need? I might be tempted to grab a little of this white and add a reflection here on this side of the bowl. Oh, yeah. Anything that you need to do to just get it to feel balanced and finished. This is amazing. And then the very last thing you do, I bet you can guess what it is. Signing it. Sending it. Everybody's saying how gorgeous this looks. 
this is going to be uh, like before I turned it so signing it like this is going to be an interesting challenge and if you're going to separate up the pieces you should sign uh, both sides All right, guys, That's... what? Did we do that? That looks amazing. Sometimes I have these ideas and I just think, was this a good idea? And this one I actually think was a really good idea. I think this was one the channel really needed to do. And since you guys have enjoyed it so much, I will definitely go ahead. If you would like a companion piece to this that's winter themed, um, I'm happy to help you guys get four of these so you can change them out seasonally in your house. It's always nice to have seasonal paintings. It's like one of the great pleasures of being creative. To that end, thank you for your time today. Be good to yourself. Be good to each other. And I'm going to see you at an easel really soon. A really big easel. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.